Welcome to the Communication Diva Podcast, episode 120. In this episode, Jen lifts up 21 common interview questions and how to answer them. Here's some advice I learned the hard way during my last job interview. If they ask you what you would bring to the job that other candidates wouldn't, don't say narcolepsy. Hi there, this is Jen Swanson. Welcome to the 120th episode of the Communication Diva podcast. This is the show where I help you to get the job, to love your work, and to advance your career through more effective and efficient communication. I share skills, fascinating guests, and all sorts of topics to help you improve your work life, your career, and and your life in general, I hope. That's my hope. Stay tuned until the end of the show today when I'm going to give you the spring sale code for the online course called Resume Secrets Plus. It's Uh, The coupon is good until April 25th, 2017 only, when the price will be going up. And I'll tell you more about it at the end of the show. And I'll give you the discount coupon code that will give you 41% off the current price. If you need to get a resume together or you need to update the resume that you already have. I also have some great guests coming up in the near future on topics such as dress code and gender expectations around dress code. And this has been a little bit topical in the news lately. There was something recently about two girls being refused admittance to an airline because they were wearing leggings. And so this guest has a lot of thoughts on that, and I'll be looking forward to bringing that conversation to you soon. The other topic that I've got lined up is uh, that as women in the workplace, as as women, uh, we often are so busy taking care of others that we neglect taking care of ourselves and how that might impact, have an impact on you in the workplace. So I don't have exact dates yet for these interviews, but I'm lining them up. And so stay tuned for those topics. Today's topic comes from doing some of the youth employment workshops that I've been doing with the local libraries and with a friend who works for a local government youth employment agency or government employment agency, actually. And we've been doing these workshops called Rock That Interview for the past couple of years, and we invite real employers to come. First of all, we teach the teens interview skills, how to do well in an interview and what components there might be and some things to think about. And this is a very quick workshop. I think the whole thing is three hours, but we give them some skills and then we send them off into individual rooms with someone they've never met before who happens to be a real employer. And the students get a 10 minute mock interview. And then afterwards, they're given some feedback and some critique and the employers come back as a panel And all of us get to sit together and ask the employers questions about interviewing. And actually, excuse me, some of the students have ended up being hired right then and there from these workshops. So I've had a great time being part of Rock That Interview. Uh, with my uh, my good friend Stephanie Pritchard from uh, from uh, Sources BC, and uh, with uh, with the, some of the local libraries, we've done this at a couple of libraries. One of them is uh, the Cloverdale Library, and one of them is I, I did a couple of times. I've done workshops at the South Surrey and White Rock libraries as well. Um, But when the interviews are over, the employers come and sit as a panel to answer questions from the teens. And one of at one of the recent sessions, one teen asked, how can I know how to answer some of the questions that I'm asked? Because how can I prepare to answer these questions? So that kind of got me thinking. And so today I have compiled for you 21 very common interview questions. And I'm going to give you ideas on why they're being asked and how to answer them. And there are probably well more than 21 common questions out there. But it seemed like a good number for the amount of time that we've got for the podcast. And so they I've put them together not in any real order 
of importance, but just 21 common questions that you could be asked during a job interview. Before we start, uh, what is important to think about from an interviewee's perspective, from someone who's going in to sit in an interview and might be asked these questions, what is important to, to think about is why they are asking you the question. And I can't stress that enough. If you understand what they're getting at and why they're asking you the question, then your answer can be formulated in such a way that it is far more effective. So pay attention to the why behind the question and you'll be able to give a much more satisfying answer both for yourself and to the interviewer. So here are the 21 questions. Again, they're not really in any kind of particular order, but um, they are uh, all questions that you might be asked at an interview. Number one, how did you hear about the position? So this is where the employer is wanting to know your connections to the company, what experience you might have had with the company, how well their marketing and advertising is working, and maybe even what circles you travel in. If it was a person who works there, for example, who recommended the company, you might be able to give their name, and I suggest that you would. If it was an ad, say what it was about that ad that caught your attention. Um, If you've If you frequented the business before, if it's a place you can actually go into, a place of business that you can go into, mention that you've been coming to this place for years. If it was something that you heard about the company, perhaps you read about it in an article online, perhaps you heard something on the radio or the TV, and if that's true, then share that and be excited about how you heard about the position. That's number one. Number two is the one that every time, every time it seems to be asked, and it's the tell me about yourself question. Now, that is a giant question. It is a broad question. And what they don't want is a big, long history of your life. You know, well, I was born back in, you know, 19 whatever. They don't want that. What they want is uh, is something relevant and concise and that really showcases some of the experiences that you've had in your life that might be important to the position. So practice a one-minute quickie answer that focuses on your work history and your goals and not so much on your family or your life story. So maybe choose two or three things that you've accomplished in your life and put those together into a one-minute little story about you and end with how what you've done makes you a great fit for the job. Remember, in every answer, in every instance, you want to be putting yourself and and why you think you are the best person for the job forward. You don't want to be overt about that in every single answer. But, uh, for example, you might say, if I was interviewing for a uh, for me, if I was interviewing for a teaching position, I might say something like, well, I've spent, you know, 23 years of, of my life teaching college students that are going into healthcare. I adore teaching. I uh, still do workshops and do all sorts of other things that involve me helping others to succeed. And this is why I, uh, I'm really interested in this position. So It's a little bit of history about myself, and it's a little bit about my passion and my interest. It's not a great big long story about where you were born and what your family situation is, because that isn't really relevant to the interview. So that's number two. Number three, what was your biggest failure or what has been your biggest failure? Now, what they want to know here. They don't really want to know, how, you know, how bad you did at something or a big mistake that you made. They want to know how honest and upfront you will be. They want to know how self-aware you are. And key here is they want to know what you learned from the experience. So again, you can craft an answer before you ever get into the interview room. Think about this question. What is something in my work life That was my biggest failure, and what have I learned from that? And the key here is what you have learned from that, so make sure you include that. And and don't dwell so long on the actual situation or the story behind it, but talk about it 
and then talk about what you've done since and how you've learned from that experience. Number four, tell me about a time you experienced conflict or or a challenge at work and what you did about it. Now, again, sometimes people get lost in talking about the actual conflict or the challenge and the whole story about he did this or she did that. And that, again, is not what they're interested in. There is an acronym out there that I've seen a lot of people use in many different situations. We use it in our our youth employment workshops as well. I'm not sure where it came from originally, but it's called the STAR technique, S-T-A-R. And this is a very handy way to craft an answer when you are in an, in an interview situation. So what it stands for is S stands for situation. Explain the situation in one or two sentences very, very briefly without naming names and without getting into all the drama of the situation. Just name it very clearly and concisely. That's S. T is the task. What was the task that had to be accomplished? Um, A would be what action you took. So how did you meet this conflict, resolve this conflict, deal with this challenge? What was it that you were able to do? And then R, S-T-A-R, what was the result? So keep it short, remembering not to spend the whole time on the situation part of it. When I'm teaching youth and they don't have a lot of work experience, I will say something like, uh, what you know? What was a time when you experienced a challenge? I will say something like, "Imagine you were, you know, you were with, maybe you were with your family and you had a flat tire, and maybe you were the one who got out and figured out how to change the tire or how to get uh, somebody to give you a ride somewhere to get help." Um, so you know what what they're looking for is actually your initiative, your creativity, your critical thinking skills, and how you express leadership in situations like that. So there are multiple things that they are looking at. They they don't really care about the actual story of the conflict. I know that in many cases we care about that because we're the ones that lived it, but the employer doesn't care about the actual story. They want to know what the situation was, S, what the task was, T, what the action was that you took, A, and what the result was, R, um, from that and what, you know, uh, so again, keep it short. So that's experiencing a conflict or a challenge. Number five, how well do you work under pressure or how do you handle stress? So what they're looking for here are your coping mechanisms and whether or not you can think on your feet. So if you are in a situation that is, there's deadlines, there's time sensitivities, or you're working in a fast environment, busy, moving, uh, you know, everything has to happen right away. Uh, think, uh, you know, the uh, the drive through window of, of a, a fast food restaurant, which is full of insane pressure, or the emergency room of a hospital or, you know, something where you have deadlines that have to be met. And so what are your coping mechanisms? What do you do? What are your, uh, how, how aware are you of when you are being stressed and how do you deal with that? So think about those answers because what they want to do is know that you are, even though it is a high stress pressured situation, that you are able to think on your feet rationally and calmly. And you might even say, I take a breath or two, I step back, I assess the situation, and then I make my plan. So think about that a little bit and have an answer. All of these things, if you practice before you go in, you will be able to sail through these answers uh, if you've already thought about them and have the answers uh, practiced and ready to go. I'm not suggesting you memorize them and make it sound like they're rehearsed, but I'm saying if you've never thought about this before, you will be far more prepared if you go in having thought about these questions and having devised uh, an answer that will work for you. So that was number five. Number six, if you were an animal, which kind of animal would you be? So that's just one example of uh, 
other seemingly weird questions that you might be asked. Now, they're seemingly weird. They seem to be odd, random, bizarre questions. I read one recently that was something to do with how many, I don't know if it was how many uh, footballs fit into uh, a minivan or something. I can't remember. It was something like that. It was something about balls and vehicles. And, you know, they seem like odd questions, but what the people are trying to do is assess your personality type, to assess your creativity, to ass- assess how you can think outside the box, to assess your willingness to take on a challenge. So they're going to ask you a bizarre question. Are you able to to take a moment and say, well, and then come up with an answer. So they are assessing your flexibility, your sense of humor, your fun, if it's a crazy question. And they are also assessing how well you're able to take something that you're thrown and then turn it back and make something rational out of it. So they might be odd questions, but they are, again, there's a why behind them. There's a purpose. So think about the question and you might even use the stalling tactic of saying, that's a, that's a really interesting question. Let me just think of an answer here for a second. That's quite fine to say something like that. And then come up with whatever it is that you would be. And in the case of which animal would you be, honestly, think about that. You know, what animal would best represent your skills and abilities that are relevant to the job? You know, maybe you can move quickly. So maybe you can say that you're a gazelle or something. You know, maybe maybe, uh, maybe you're quick on your feet. Uh, or maybe you're slow, uh, you're thoughtful and you're quiet. So you'd be a quieter animal than a louder animal. Anyway, you can think about that. And you may never get asked that question, but you may get asked an equally strange kind of question. And there is a reason behind it. People don't just ask these random questions. Number seven is how well do you work with others? So this is the emotional intelligence, the group dynamics. They want to know about how you've handled teamwork in the past, how well you play in the sandbox as the saying goes. So that is a question that you can think about a little bit too and give some examples of perhaps where you were doing volunteer work or where you were working in a team in a former work situation where, uh, you know, maybe you've played on a, on a sports team, etc. So this is your chance to talk about time that you've worked in teams and and participated in teams and volunteer work counts so it could be volunteering and uh, and you can talk about that and and how well you did in a team most workplace settings do involve not all of them but most of them do involve working with other people so how you get along with other people is a big determining factor and how well you'll fit into the culture and the the team of the company that you're applying for. And so um, people often will ask that question. Number eight, do you plan to have a family? That kind of a question uh, goes along with gender identity questions, marriage questions, are you married or single, uh, sexual orientation questions, religion questions, politics. These are all illegal questions and are not actually supposed to be asked. Unfortunately, they get asked fairly frequently. Um, This could actually be a red flag for you. (laughs) Do I want to work for somebody who asks me that question? So don't forget that you might be the one being interviewed for the job, but you are also interviewing the job for your life. So pay attention to that. And uh, it might be that you are not very happy with what you're hearing if they ask you that kind of question. Now, you should be able to redirect by being very vague about your answer and then asking a question to get back on track. So if they're asking you, do you plan to have a family? You might say something like, oh, I'm not even there yet. How about, you know, I have a question about X and then ask a question about X. Because frankly, it is none of their business and it is illegal for them to ask those questions. Again, they might ask you, one of those questions, you know, they might make a political reference. They might, um, they might ask something about 
religion. Um, they're not allowed to ask that. They are allowed to ask if you're available to work on Saturdays or Sundays, which might be their way of fishing to find out if that's your Sabbath day, for example. Um, but, uh, but be wary because they're not supposed to ask you those questions. And so you can evade those confidently and, um, and be, you know, the best tactic is to ask a question about something else. All right, uh, number nine, what are your greatest strengths? Now, we've already talked uh, a little bit about your biggest failure, um, but this is a really common question. What are your greatest strengths or what are your strengths? And I, my advice here is for you to shine, but don't brag. And what I mean by that is to be honest about talking about what you're really good at, um, but, you know, try to avoid cliches, try to avoid, you know, I am the best at X or I am, you know, I had one person on a resume put that she was the quintessential, I think she was the quintessential barista. And I thought, oh my, that didn't sound very humble at all. And if, you know, if you're that great, what are you doing applying for a job that has nothing to do with being a barista, right? So, um, so talk about what you are really good at. Make sure it's relevant to the job. So what are your greatest strengths? You know, I am extremely organized or I am able to remember names or I'm, you know, there there might be a number of things that you're very good at. I'm I'm able to think on my feet really well or I'm able to think under pressure. Those are all things that could be strengths. So but again, try to avoid clichés and and be truthful. What are you good at? And if you're not sure when you're doing your preparation for this, ask people around you or people that you work with currently or people who have worked with you in the past, because you can be sure your references will be asked that question. What are his or her greatest strengths? So there you go. Uh, number 10 is the question that always goes along with that one is what are your weaknesses? Sometimes they couch it as uh, in the phrase, what are your growing edges? Or they might just straight up say, what do you need to work on? And so make the, your answer real. Uh, and what I mean by that is saying that you are too organized is not a weakness. That's I call that a fake answer. Oh, I'm too organized. It drives people crazy. That's not a weakness. That's you trying to show how great you are at being organized by pretending that that's a weakness. So be honest about it. And and be careful to have a balance here. You don't want to say, I suck at X or I'm terrible at this. You know, you might say, I have a challenge with whatever X happens to be. One of my challenges is I interrupt people. And I might say that I tend to interrupt people and I'm I'm working on being mindful of that and being careful of that. You might be afraid to speak in public. And you might say, I, I uh, get really nervous when I do public speaking if I have to do a presentation. But I've recently signed up with Toastmasters, for example, and I'm practicing and learning to get better at presentations. So the key here when you're talking about your weaknesses or what you need to work on is to make sure that it's relevant and make sure you explain how you're working on it or how you are getting better at it. That's what people want to hear. They want to hear an honest answer. Uh, and what they're looking for is how honest you are and how self-aware you are. And be careful not to be too self-deprecating. We all have things that we can work on, but be careful that you want to you want to say it honestly, but you don't want to put yourself down in such a way that other red flags are raised. So uh, the examples that I gave, again, the example of presentation skills. Maybe you are you get really nervous when you're doing public speaking, uh, but you're taking measures, you're taking steps to work on that. So so that might be something. I've signed up for a course to help me get better at that, or I've hired a coach to help me uh, speak, you know, learn how to present without being so nervous. Those are uh, are really good answers. And whatever your weaknesses are, as long as you can show that you're taking steps to improve your weakness, then you are showing initiative and you are, are showing motivation. And those are things that they want you to show. Those are things that employers want to see. 
Number eleven. What do you expect as far as salary goes, or you know, what what are you hoping to be paid? Uh, and the best answer for that is to research. Look up what people with your skills and experience are being paid in the same position. Research the company and uh, and give uh, the highest figure that you feel comfortable giving, and let them know that you're open for negotiation. You're flexible. Be confident in your answer. Uh, If you say, oh, well, I have no idea, what do you pay, then you haven't done your research. So make sure you research what they pay, and and there are ways to do that. There are online ways that you can can look up how to find out how much people get paid. Sometimes the companies have pay scales and, and salary schedules listed on their websites. You just have to dig a little bit for those. So do your research and then have an answer. For what you expect to be paid. And maybe it said so in the job posting. Maybe it said what the pay was. And there isn't room for negotiation if it's a union position. But uh, make sure that you're in line with what is the, uh, the normal pay for your experience level and your skill level and your position. Number 12, why are you leaving your current job or why did you leave the last job that you had? Be careful about saying anything negative. Leave out conflict and don't badmouth your former employer. Be honest and positive and focus on the opportunity for advancement or the fact that you have a change of heart and you'd like to go in this new direction. But be careful about saying anything bad because that shows a disloyalty. And a new employer will not be very impressed if you are being disloyal uh, to a previous employer or if you are saying nasty things about a previous employer. So be very careful about what you say there. Keep it positive and keep it forward moving. I, I was downsized. And if you were downsized, if you were laid off, be honest about that. And if you were fired, yeah, you can say that as well. And they might ask you about that. It might come up in your references. Um, But you can also add to that by saying what you've been doing since, what you've been thinking of, what you've been, what you've learned from the experience and how you want to guarantee that that won't happen again. So Those are some of the things that you can be prepared in before you come, especially if you you left your job or were let go from your job and, um, and now you're seeking a new job. If you're in a current job, it might be that you're tired of that particular position and you're looking for advancement or you want to learn new things. Those are all good answers. Uh, The next question might be number 13. Tell me about the gap in your employment. Maybe you've had a break in your resume and you have a number of years that are not accounted for in an employment uh, section. This is the chance uh, to be honest. Uh, I was raising children or maybe you were ill or maybe you were studying or you took a break and went traveling or you were looking for work Or maybe you were taking some time to figure out what it was you really wanted to do. Whatever the answer is, make sure it's an honest answer. And and again, make it positive and forward thinking. I took a break to sort of sort myself out, took a couple of courses, did some volunteer work in there. And, uh, and then I saw this opportunity and decided this, this was really calling to me. And this was something that I felt like I should, I should try. So talk about why you're excited about this new possibility. Number 14, what do you know about our company? How much do you know about our company? Any question along those lines? This is the chance to show that you have done that industry research and that you have learned as much as you can about the company. If you've been able to visit it in person, if you've looked it up online, if you've read articles about it, if you know somebody who works there and you've sat down and bought them a coffee and uh, question them about it, uh, make sure you've read their mission statement if they've got one. Dig around if they've got a website, dig around on the website and Look into all the different areas that you can and make sure you remember something about that. You can talk about what you know or what you've heard. And what this shows is initiative, motivation, and interest. 
everyone can read back what is written on the job description, but if you've poked around on their website and say, I was really interested in, in, you know, the, the event that you held last summer when you all went off as a, as a team and, and did, you know, built houses for, uh, people in, you know, Guatemala or somewhere and, and, and did some team building. And I thought that sounded like a really uh, great, effort put on by the company to, you know, etc. So, you know, dig around a little bit, learn as much as you can about the company and bring some of that forward. You're allowed to have notes in an interview. You're allowed to have a few things written down if you're going to forget a lot of this stuff. But the idea is that you have thought about this question in advance and and really are able to answer what you know about the company that is beyond just the job description on the job posting. Number 15, where do you see yourself in five years? This They want to know your goals. They want to know how you would like to advance. They want to know if you are realistic in your hopes and your expectations. They want to know if you plan to be there long term and, uh, and, and where you see yourself advancing in the future. So be realistic. They are looking to see how ambitious you are. They are looking to learn about what your intentions are. This is a chance to be able to answer that truthfully, where you see yourself in the next five years. Number 16, what do you do for fun? What what do you do outside of work? And this is where your personality can come through and other skills and talents that you have. This is where you can talk about any volunteer work that you happen to do. This gives insight into what kind of person you are and whether or not you might fit in with the culture of the organization and with the team members in the work environment. So, you know, maybe you enjoy um, mixed martial arts. Maybe you enjoy surfing. Maybe you love photography. Maybe you are a baker or you love organic gardening, whatever it is. Throw that in when they ask what you do for fun, what you do outside of work. And uh, and it shows the rounded person that you are and that you have other skills and talents that are interesting and exciting. And I heard an employer say not too long ago that she found out quite by accident that one of her employers was a an artist. And, and it was because she had walked past his desk or they were in a meeting, I can't remember what it was, but he was doing some doodling and she looked down at the paper and what he had done was stunning. And she said, Hey, are you know? Tell me about this. And so he said, "Oh, I just I fool around and I do this." Well, now he's working on designing their new logo for the company because of this extra talent or skill that he had. So you never know where these things might come in handy, and uh, and they are asking you the question: What do you do for fun, or what do you do outside of work hours? So be careful. Uh, about, you know, certain activities, you know, you don't want to talk about, uh, you know, beverages that you are uh, consuming all the time on the weekend or, or whatever. I mean, be careful about your answer. But and again, always, always be thinking what it is that they are getting at. Why are they asking you this question? And remember, remembering the why you'll give a good answer. Number 17, what would you do if dot, 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 or tell me about a time when dot, dot, dot. So, you know, what would you do if this, and they'll give you a scenario or tell me about a time when this didn't go so well, or when this happened, these are situational questions. And again, what they're looking for are your critical thinking skills. And you are allowed to take a little bit of time. You might, uh, say, well, that's a really good question to buy yourself some time. Um, And if it is the tell me about a time when kind of a question, use that star formula again that I mentioned earlier, the situation, the task, the action, and the response. And focus on the action that you took and the response or the result that you got from the action that you took. So uh, use that formula when you are giving the situation. And situational questions are often asked in uh, in job interviews. You can't always practice these in advance, but you can uh, remember why they're asking the question and that they are far more interested, they are less interested in the story of what happened 
and they were they are far more interested in what you might do about a situation like that. So so think about what you might do that would be most beneficial and answer that way. Number 18, why do you want this job or why do you want to work for our company? And this is when you talk about your goals and what you'd like to learn, not uh, not talking about, well, I need the money because I need to buy groceries and I need to take my wife out and, you know, like that, that's not a good reason. <laughs> so, uh, I mean, it is a good reason, but it's not a reason they want to hear. So talk about your goals. You know, I heard that you were doing X and I'd love to be part of that. Um, I, I like to help people and this is a job when I could feel like I'm really making a difference in the world, etc. So why and why? You might want to think about why do I want to work there? What is it that draws me to this, uh, to sit here in this interview? What is drawing me towards this position? Number 19 is a question that I guess asked sometimes, what would you do in the first, and you can, you know, it could be 30 days, 60 days, 90 days, of this position. If you got this job, what would you do in your first 30 days, for example? So how would you begin is basically what they're asking. And I recommend talking about learning about the organization from the inside and listening to people in the company and listening to what people are complaining about and what they are hoping for and getting to know people and then taking action. And if you're going into a management position, talk to people, sit down and talk to employees one-to-one about what they are uh, frustrated with and what they're hoping for. And then you can make an action plan. And maybe if you know enough about the company already, if you've done your research, there might be something that you've already identified that you'd like to tackle as a a first project. So you might begin uh, talking, mentioning by mentioning that. But again, it all comes back to doing your research and understanding the role for which you've applied. Number 20 is why should we hire you? And this is your chance to pitch yourself. This is where you get to talk about your skills, your experience, and talk about why you are a good fit, why you might be a better fit than other candidates. And you don't need to say that, but you might say that I'm really passionate about this and that I've had all of this experience. I think my skills line up and, you know, this is why I think I would be a great addition to your team. So pitch yourself and practice this before, because they're going to ask you this question, most likely, why should we hire you? Why do you think you'd be best for this job? Um, And that's when you can show your your personality, your passion and your interest. And so, so really work on that before you go in. The last one that I have is one that is always asked at the end of an interview is, do you have any questions? And always, yes, always have a question always have at least one or two questions ready. And actually, you can Google lists of good questions to ask when you are being interviewed. And there are dozens and dozens and dozens of them. And my favorite is what is the best thing that you found about working for this company when you ask the interviewer that question? Like, why do they love being here? Why are they passionate about this company? And uh, what made them come to this company in the first place? I mean, there are lots of questions you can ask there. I would avoid, you know, when, you know, uh, when would I start? When would, you know, I would avoid those kind of questions. You can ask when might I expect, uh, you know, when, when do you expect to be making a decision? That's a good question. But I like to have a solid question. You can ask questions about the role. You can ask questions about, um, but don't ask questions about details like holiday time and that kind of thing. That comes later once you've been offered the job. This is a chance to to dig a little more and to learn a little bit more about the company and to ask any burning question that you have that uh, that you might want to ask while you have this person Uh, listening and waiting for you to ask a question. So take advantage of that and make sure you always have at least one good question, maybe two at the end of your interview. So there are many more, of course, but these are some of the main questions that you can prepare yourself for before you ever get to the interview. Yes, it takes time, but it will make a far, far better interview if you've thought about these things before you get there. And if you practice 
your answers. So again, remember the why. Why are they asking the questions? What is their motivation for asking that question? What are they looking for by asking you that question? What skills and attributes are they watching for in how you answer? And craft your answers to fit. Now, I'm not saying uh, to make anything up, but make sure your answers are relevant and that they showcase you in the best light. Be authentic, be honest without inventing things and without embellishing upon what you can do or what you've done in the past. If you if you go in ready to answer the questions honestly, authentically, and have thought, put some thought and care into thinking about them in advance, you will be far, far ahead of those who don't prepare at all for their interview. So I hope those were helpful for you. And I'm sure there are more. And if you want to let me know of more questions, maybe a question that you've been asked that you couldn't imagine in the first place that you hadn't anticipated, you can leave a voice message over at communicationdiva.com using the speak pipe button on the the right-hand side of the screen. There'll be something that pops up and you can leave me a voicemail or you can type it into the uh, message, uh, the comment section on the website. Or you can um, drop me an email at jenn at communicationdiva.com. So I wanted to tell you before I let you go about the spring sale that's on for my Resume Secrets Plus course. This is over at courses.communicationdiva.com. This is the Resume Secrets Course Plus. And the plus part is a personal resume review by me. So um, it's... uh, a course that is currently retailing at $49 Canadian. At the end of April, the price is going up to $79. But until April 25th, 2017, you can get the Resume Secrets Plus, the personalized resume review for only $29 Canadian. If you use the coupon code, I'm going to give you the code. It's all capital letters and there's no spaces. It's Spring Forward. S P R I N G. F-O-R-W-A-R-D. There's no spaces. Spring forward, all capital letters. And that will give you a 41% discount off the current price of $49. This is only for the Resume Secrets Plus course that you find that includes the personalized resume review. Um, And this is almost an hour of video tutorial that will help you to get your resume in top shape. Plus, we'll give you uh, my, uh, you will send me your uh, final resume and I will look at it and spend some time thinking about it and write back any suggestions or ideas I have for ways that you could improve it even more before you're ready to send it out. So that's, it takes time on my part to do that. And so this is quite a big value uh, for $29 for all of that. Um, and again, it, it is only valid until April 25th, 2017. So you can buy this as a gift for someone else too. If you know a student graduating who needs to get a summer job or, or you know somebody who needs to get their resume in shape, you can check it out, courses.communicationdiva.com and you can gift it, buy it and gift it to someone else. All you need is their email address. So thanks again for listening. You are very much appreciated. I hope you found value in this podcast. And until next time, this is Jen Swanson. Happy spring, everyone.